Welcome to Focus. This segment is an opportunity for us to focus on what matters with people, places, and things. I'm your photographer, Daryl Leverage. Families used to come out and they would take care of graves and they would picnic, you know, after church you'd come out and you'd eat after church and you'd, you'd clean the graves and you'd put flowers out and it was just a traditional thing and you'd talk about your loved ones that were long gone and you'd tell stories. It was just your tradition and it's kind of fallen by the wayside. I think people move off, you know, children move away, they move to other places and, and it, the graves just fall into disrepair and people forget where, where their family members are buried. I decided I was going to show my friend Bill Owens a grist mill that I was interested in and we drove out to see the grist mill and on the way back he said I think you would like to see this cemetery and so he showed me a cemetery that was right across the street from where I lived and I could not believe I had lived there for that long and I had never seen it. I was shocked and appalled and so I saw it and I just I, we looked at it for a few minutes and I went home and I couldn't stop thinking about it so a few minutes later I decided to amble back over and I went I walked all the way through it and I started taking pictures and then I called him back up and I said oh well look at this, look at this, look what I found. And I got so excited about it. And then I said, well, we have to do something. And so then from then on, it was, it was kind of game on. I, I just, yeah. So then from, I guess it was every other weekend, we were in there cleaning, cleaning and pulling briars and just working away. <laughs> Just, just clearing vines and cleaning gravestones, chopping down trees. <laughs> and, you know, it's it just been a discovery of, of gravestones and plants. And it's been fun. But meeting people, you know, it, it's been different people coming out every, every other weekend. You know, and sometimes it's a good group of people. Sometimes it's no people. You know, it might be a lonely weekend out there, but sometimes it's a bunch of people. It just depends, but you can't give up. You know, you just got to keep at it. I would like to see the cemetery in the name of the city of Monroe, and that's something I really would like to work toward. You know, and I don't want it to be an added expense for the city. I don't think it would be. I just think that it it needs to it it needs to have a you know it, it needs to have a, a place you know so that this never happens again a, you know a caretaker if you will so if a tree does fall you know that's something that will be done about it or if a, you know the vines start to grow crazy and i'd like to keep our um our stewardship group going you know where we come out right now we're coming out twice a month i think once everything is as it should be, we can cut back to maybe one time a month just to cut vines, you know, spray a little roundup if needed, those types of things. But I would like to see it, you know, in the name of a certified entity like the city of Monroe. And I think that it was good that they were placed here to identify it as a cemetery. I think that that was a blessing. You know, and as we move forward, I, I really want to repair all the broken markers, find where all the the graves you know the probability of all the graves are and you know place some type of you know small marker on all the graves something that's not going to rot i've known about the, the cemetery for years um i did not know the history of it i, I knew it was african-american cemetery and i knew that it was um uh um, abandoned so to speak and um I told her about it and she had looked at it and I think about a week or so later we went back over there and we tromped through all the weeds and through everything and, and uh, slowly started gathering history on it and, and figuring out what it was and who was there and, and what it was all about. Um, and I'd heard so many myths and half-truths and, and you know you just get this, this you know local 
folklore type thing going on within the community and and it was like well let's dig into this and and so it was absolutely fascinating you know from there you know we ended up going to the county courthouse and going through the the archive records and, and seeing how this all came about and um and there was a lot of things that people thought or believed that just weren't true and uh, uh and it was it's just a wonderful story of how this church came about and how it was founded and how the cemetery came about um, and how they moved and and then it was just kind of forgotten for a while and uh, so it was really nice to uncover this piece of Monroe history uh, that we could just share with everybody and I've absolutely enjoyed the, the entire journey. This past week's been really great because we could finally see the buildings you know finally look through all the look over that whole vast expanse and you can you can see all the way to the other side and before you would look and it would just be a jumbled mass of plants and you couldn't see anything and now you can see to the other side you know you can see the light i feel like preservation is a value because it unites all people it this preserves cultural heritage and i think that that's important this cultural heritage is important, not just for the African-American community. I think it's important for blacks, whites, you know, people of all color. I think it's important not just to remember the past, but it's important for people of today, but it's important to people for the future, too. We've got to think about, you know, not just ourselves, but for, for the people of the future. We've got to preserve this for, for ongoing generations, you know? I think so. You know, the, the, the original thought that's just evolved from the very beginning was, you know, hey, let's just clean this up so people can see it. So someone else can come in here and, and, and see what's going on. And from there, um, you know, that journey has just taken us to, to learn what this really was and, and who was really here and, and the people that were buried there. Um, it's pretty unique and, and I still find it fascinating when you can find these graves that we literally are just finding, you know, you're just digging through this forest of, of underbrush and growth and you happen upon a grave and you can find someone that's been lost, so to speak. Um, and that's, that's, that in itself is, is so rewarding, you know, just to find that and discover that. And if you don't, if you don't preserve these stories, they're going to disappear, you know, and I think it's important, but just I think by preserving these stories, we're helping to create new stories. I mean, don't you think? I think it, it, it helps us shape what's to come. You know, Monroe is probably one of the un most unique places. Uh, and we, we have such a rich history and, and it, it goes back and forth. And the more you read into the history of, of Monroe, uh, the diversity that you have here in this community is, is quite unique in itself. Uh, uh, you can definitely look at the other communities around us and, and it's just not the same. We can do a lot of things with this cemetery. We can preserve this space, but I think we can preserve many more things in this community. And I think not just with this community, I think other communities you know, can look at this and they can do bigger things in their, their communities. I think, you know, Doing one thing can ripple across other communities. I believe that. <laughs>